Hi everyone, let's have a look at my preferred and alternative bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with my preferred scenario on the medium time frame, where this is a five wave structure in an A, followed by a three wave structure in a wave B, before then continuation to the downside in a wave C. Now in this particular scenario, price reached the white target box that we have for a while already, which is between 27.6k and 27.2k, which is basically between the weekly and the triple bottom, which we have over here. So there's a definitely liquidity below these lows for maybe another push to the downside and then a continuation to the upside. But I will talk about that in the low time frame and micro scenarios as it stands now. Price is bouncing on the 886 Fibonacci taken from the low of this A to the high of this A, which as you can see acts as support. And we also have some bullish CVD divergences between the low over here and the higher low that price has created. So a higher low on price, but a lower low on the CVD, which is a bullish divergence. And the target of this bullish CVD divergence is this high at 30K. And also just above the high at 30k we have a blue target box which is still not touched between 30.2k and 30.4k for some additional confluence where then if price is moving to these highs we are then looking for potentially a move to the downside for then the wave c for much lower targets to come if however price continues to the upside you can see this target box is bigger because of some other alternative scenarios that i have but are not relevant at the moment but if price continues to the upside and takes the high over here at 30 1k then this being a five wave structure is invalidated for this scenario being then a zigzag because in a zigzag this wave b is not allowed to take the high of the origin of wave a which is currently at 31k now this scenario plays very very nicely in hand with this potential fake out of a triangle so the first thing a trader learns most likely is trend lines and patterns so if you pull a trend line at the top one at the bottom you create a triangle now if i look at the waves inside this triangle I do not agree with this being a triangle from an Elliott wave perspective as the sub-degree waves over here are not matching the triangle rules. So what I'm actually looking for, which is also the scenario that you've just shown, is this being a fake out for then a continuation to the upside or at least a move to the upside. Because what do we see over here and what makes most people lose? Currently inside this range, undoubtedly many people have been shorting, putting their stop losses above these highs expecting a move to the downside and you also have the breakout shorters which are the people that see candles close below the lower trend line enter a short over here stop loss in a triangle and they are also looking for downside so we have to ask the question what makes most people lose because in general you know the fact is like 90 percent of the traders lose in this particular scenario what i would like to see is a move to the upside stop out the triangle breakout traders then continue to the upside to take the liquidity of this triple top stopping all the shorts out that have been made in this range until you unless your stop loss is of course here but there must be a lot of liquidity above this triple top for then a continuation to the downside so you first stop out everyone that is shorting in this range for then a continuation to the downside so that is something i'm looking for and that is why this particular scenario is so interesting to me and also therefore this is my preferred scenario if we then go to my alternative scenario on the medium time frame, I'm looking at this bullish scenario over here, where this is then either a wave one, two, and then another one, two, for then a bigger three to the upside. For me, very unlikely that this over here was a wave two and then an A, B, C, or maybe this is only the first structure because a wave two definitely needs to retrace a lot deeper. So the other scenario is just uh, is this being a one, two, then a three, this horizontal range being a wave four and then a five to the upside. But the bullish scenario basically says that we are already finished with a wave four or a wave two, because this is then the end of the correction and this being an ABC expanding flat. Wave B did go very, very high, which is very uncommon actually, but it shouldn't be forgotten at least that a bullish scenario is always necessary. So this is the bullish one ABC. This is then a wave one, three wave in a wave two, and then looking for more upside. It has to be said that the 886 retracement for a wave two is a rare target and not a common target, while the 886 for a wave B or a wave X is a normal target it's completely normal and maybe even common so that is something to take into account with this bullish scenario which is definitely an alternative scenario and not a preferred scenario this bullish scenario will be invalidated the moment the low over here is taken at 26.9k if you then go to the one hour time frame and zoom in a little bit at what we have been looking for in the most recent videos the first scenario is this being a zigzag which is then an abc 
I mentioned in my previous video that the longer price is ranging, the less likely for me this scenario becomes, and therefore this scenario is now starting to feel like an alternative scenario, where this is a five wave structure in a wave A, three waves in a B, and then another five wave move in a wave C. And the reason why this then becomes an alternative scenario to me is because this wave C is starting to take very long, like usually a wave A and a wave C are similar in price and similar in time, but currently this wave C takes a lot more time than this being uh, a wave A. So this wave A was a lot shorter in the time it took to form wave A than it took to form this wave C. As you can see, like wave C is just much longer. You can see it by eye. You don't even have to measure it really. Even if the low of wave C is already in over here, this is still quite a long wave C, but the low could be in. That shouldn't be forgotten. The low could potentially be in. We are in the most common target area for a wave C, which is between the one and the 1.236, taken from the origin of wave A to the low of A to the high of B, which creates this space over here. We have been ranging in it for quite a while now, but we do need a push to the upside if this is the low of wave C. But if we get another move to the downside, which is a scenario coming up in a second, uh, I'm thinking about this being a potential one, two, three, four, five wave structure. And that also means that this whole structure is changing, which is the scenario I'd like to show you now. So this might become an alternative because the scenario that I show you now is then this being an A wave followed by a B wave retracing to the 886 and then looking for a wave C to the downside, which is then a five wave structure. So a one, two, three, four, and then another wave five to come, taking maybe the liquidity of this triple bottom for then a continuation to the upside, right? Thinking about the medium time frame scenario that we have. Now, the price or the target area for price is between the one and the 1.236, which has been reached already. So also in this scenario, we already reached the target box. So price does not have to go to the downside in order to be a valid scenario. We already reached the most common target area for a wave C in this then being an ABC. And because this now is then a three wave structure in an ABC, it has to be then part of a wave Y with this then being somehow a W, then we have an X and then we have a Y. And as you can see, this W is very short in time. X is longer, much longer than uh, wave W, and Y is even longer again. So it doesn't make it look very good, uh, but in the end, what we are basically looking for is a bounce in and around this area over here with the scenarios that I'm showing. And if we then zoom into this particular impulse, then what you're seeing over here, let's actually go to the 30 minute, is a five way structure in then a wave one, two, then we have a wave three, four, and then eventually a wave five, where the high of this wave four could be interesting is then the daily naked point of control at 27.950 in confluence with the 0 0.382, which is pulled from the high of two to the low of three. It has to be said though, that this wave three did not reach one of the more common targets for a wave three, or usually the minimum target for a wave three, which is the 1.618. And if I put that on the chart, open my wave three target over here, you can see the 1.618 is far below the current target of this wave three over here, right? The wave three then stopped over here, but usually the minimum target for wave three is the 1.618. However, that would be below all the lows that we have over here. So yeah, um, the ABC versus the impulse, that is basically the question. Actually, both have their minuses as well as their pluses, I suppose. Uh, I can't really have a preferred scenario for either or. The main scenario that I think of is having a bounce somewhere in this area for then continuation to the upside, which, uh, which then stops out all the triangle people and also follows my preferred scenario on the medium time frame. And if we then go to the micro time frames over here, then I'm looking at the following. So on the micro, this is a bearish scenario where this then is an ABC before you then expect another move to the downside. So in this scenario, we then have a five wave structure in a wave A, this then being a one, two, three, four, five, followed by an expanding flat wave B for then a wave C to the upside. Now the expanding flat over here being an ABC, this being wave A, then we have a B and then we have a C is a three, three and then a five wave structure. We had bearish divergences over here, but as you can see, they didn't play out, which is completely normal because no indicator or whatever strategy will play out 100%. But I did at least want to mention that the bearish divergences that we have did not play out because the target for bearish divergences are the lows over here. And the invalidation is if price takes the high, which it has done. So we can now remove this from the chart over here. So price, three waves, three waves, then a five wave move down. It went to the 
105, as you can see, which is a rare target for an expanding flat wave B, and this then being an ABC. But the wave C and the expanding flat is valid, where we are then looking for a impulsive structure to the upside in then a wave C, where the most common target area for this wave C is between the 1 and the 1.236, which is between 27.8K and basically 28k, which also includes again that daily naked point of control. So this area and especially that daily naked point of control is going to be very, very important for basically the, 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 the decision. Are we going to have more upside for the bulls or are we going to find more downside for the bears after which we maybe then eventually get another push to the upside, right? Because we are looking for a bit more upside, preferably at least. We do have some bullish diver uh, divergences locally on the CVD. So we have a higher low on price, but we have a lower low on the CVD, which I can show you if I go to the 15 minute over here and zoom into the range that we have at the moment. You can clearly see we have a higher low on price, but both the yellow as well as actually the blue line created a lower low, which is a bullish divergence. And the target for this bullish divergence is the high over here that is made at 27.8K. So once this high is taken, we, are, we say that the CVD divergences played out and basically we go back to neutral. So we also have the target box over here. So that is quite important and something to look at. Then we have the more bullish scenario where this is not an ABC, but this is a one, two, and then you expect three, four, five. Yeah, basically you expect an impulse to the upside, right? In this particular scenario, an ABC is more rare in a wave two. So in a wave two, the most common a corrective pattern is a zigzag, which is a five, three, five wave move. But however, we now got an ABC, an expanding flat, which is a bit more rare in a wave two, but it is possible because a wave two needs to be any corrective pattern really. Um, and in this case, it's then an ABC, but it does, it is something you have to keep in mind, right? Usually it's a zigzag, but now it's an ABC uh, expanding flat. Okay, possible, possible, but maybe an ABC might be more likely. However, in this scenario, we simply expect price to push to the upside and volume is gonna play an important role. So if we see volume increase with this push to the upside confidently, like volume going up, 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 price is very vertical to the upside, it is more likely we are in a wave three in this than being a one, two, expecting much higher prices. However, if volume is not increasing, let's go to the bear scenario, and volume might be quite similar to this wave A over here, then it is more likely we might be in a wave C. Now, I do notice lately that wave Cs might have a high volume peak at the end, but then, price just slowly goes back to the downside. So it is something to look for. Currently, we are pushing to the upside uh, clearly, as we can see over here. So we will see how this plays out. Maybe at the morning update tomorrow morning, we have a lot more clarity. And then the most bearish scenario, which is not preferred, but at least I wanted to have it on the chart, is that if price would have continued to push to the downside over here, we could think about this being a three-wave structure, a three-wave structure, and another three-wave structure in a WXY. It is not preferred and also we didn't reach then the, let's say, target area over here between the 1 and the 1.236. So I do prefer another push to the upside in both of these scenarios, either as a wave C or as a wave 3. And then based on the price section that we have, we have to decide if it is going to be a wave 3 or a wave C. But at the moment, it is pushing to the upside very, very nicely indeed. I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the macro and the high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I will see you at the next one. Bye bye.